In 1990, the St. Louis Earthquake Survival Guide contained important messages that could save Missourians from the massive tremors that were predicted to occur on December 3rd of that year. Probably everyone's worst fear is an earthquake hits, the arch falls over, and all of St. Louis is reduced to rubble. Well, that would make a great Hollywood script, but it's just not going to happen here. Now, but to me, a social media producer in 2022, this video was TikTok gold. 9PBS posted four short videos from the survival guide on TikTok, and they went viral. So they're going to have to be secured, and I'll show you how to do that later. Now, put your feet against the wall, brace yourself, and ride it out. If you're a burnout from the 60s and still have shag carpeting, grab a hold of the stuff. All this attention to the videos got me more interested in the events that made the survival guide happen. So I reached out to the man in the viral TikToks to find out more. So they were looking for an individual who knew about earthquakes, who could be the talent, if you would, on this uh, video. So my boss just turned with me and said, they want to talk to you and see if you might be interested in doing it. That's him, Nick Gragnani. He's the retired director of the St. Louis Regional Response System. Due to his expertise in natural disasters, he had a brush with fame in 1990. I would start off in the morning and I had a, a suitcase, they had a slide projector in it and slides and all kinds of brochures and videotape. I would start in the morning at schools talking about earthquakes. I'd work the afternoon lunchtime with the Kiwanis Clubs and the Rotaries. I'd finish up at night with, with uh, it, uh, community centers and stuff where people just wanted to know more information about earthquakes and how to prepare for this supposedly coming earthquake. The reason for Gragnani's busy schedule in 1990 can be traced back to one person. There is a probability, an enhanced probability, of a large earthquake along all faults in the 30 to 60 degrees north latitude range. Ivan Browning was kind of an, an interesting individual. He was, um, he was well educated, um, but uh, he was also kind of a self-promoter as well. Christopher Allen Gordon is the director of Library and Collections at the Missouri Historical Society. He explains Ivan Browning's background. By training, his actual um, field of study, he was a zoologist. Uh, and then he became a basically a self-educated climatologist. Somewhere along those lines, he also begins to theorize about seismology and earthquakes and geology. And he began to make predictions about quakes and so forth. Gordon says that at a Missouri governor's conference, Browning made his famous prediction. He made a prediction that 50% chance or greater that there would be a six point to seven point earthquake that would occur in the New Madrid Fault region and that this would have devastating consequences over an area like Memphis, Tennessee, and St. Louis, and this entire region. Eventually, Browning had his prediction down to the date, December 3rd, 1990. But Gragnani says there was no real rhyme or reason for this date. You cannot pick a day and time when an earthquake's going to occur. You can predict over a period of time, over a period of years, the percentage of that, just because of the activity and the built up of, of, of energy on those fault lines, but it's still just a guess. And although some experts knew better, many people in the area surrounding the fault began to worry. Keep in mind there will be an earthquake in Missouri. An earthquake can happen at any time without any warning whatsoever. Gragnani said interest in earthquake preparedness took off during this time. I mean, I would show up at a meeting where somebody said, could you come talk about earthquakes? And there might be a dozen people there. When this started, I was at the Florissant uh, Community Center, and I think there was over 500 people in the hall. The fire marshal had to close the doors because there were so many people in the room and it exceeded the level of what was uh, safe for having that number of people in the room. You know, just two years ago, nobody really cared or was it that much interested in earthquakes, and now it was a, really a true panic. And their worries weren't unfounded. Catastrophic earthquakes had hit Missouri before, the most famous being the New Madrid, Missouri earthquakes of 1811 to 1812. There was an earthquake as no one had ever felt before. It was something that <laughs> severely shocked people, scared people. Um, you know, even after that first uh, earthquake, people began to move out of the region. Uh, then there were two more powerful earthquakes. Actually, the most powerful of the earthquakes 
occur in February of the next year. New Madrid as a town was, was basically devastated. These three major earthquakes destroyed almost all the buildings in the sparsely populated southern Missouri town and are estimated to have reached between 7 to 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale. The most devastating of the earthquakes, and this is probably what people equate with this uh, event, is that the Mississippi River in one section actually backed up and ran backwards for a while. But even if people in the St. Louis region weren't familiar with the New Madrid fault line, several other events caused earthquakes to be fresh on their minds. You are looking at an earthquake. This one hit the San Francisco area last October. Here in the St. Louis region, an earthquake is not a question of if, it's a question of when the New Madrid fault will shift enough to trigger a major earthquake. FEMA, just coincidentally, that same summer of 1990, uh, released a report on what would happen if there was a devastating earthquake uh, in the New Madrid Fault region. So that was kind of fresh information that was just coming out and of course it was saying that the losses without the right preparations, the losses would be devastating. There was also in 1989 uh, kind of a fresh memory of people watching the World Series and uh, they saw an earthquake a live on television during the, during the 1989 World Series. Um, so people were thinking about that. And then in September of 1990, there was actually like a 4.7 earthquake down in the Cape Girardeau area. So all of these put together, um, all this was fresh on people's minds. It seemed to be the perfect storm for an earthquake panic. Gragnani and Gordon say the media fed into the frenzy, including Channel 9. All of a sudden we started getting phone calls and we were getting phone calls from the press saying, do you know about this Ivan Browning and the earthquake prediction that he is making? There were some people in the media that began to pay attention to him and it kind of snowballed from there. And so local newspapers pick it up first and then the television stations start talking about it and before long it's just national attention. But Browning's unfounded prediction caused real changes in St. Louis. In Missouri alone, there was $22 million in new earthquake insurance that was just wow. taken out in the months before. I mean, yeah. it's unnecessary insurance, basically. Um, and, uh, you know, schools would close, uh, you know, things like uh, emergency management uh, agencies were having to print all these disaster literature packets and things like that. So it, it was making a real uh, economic impact. This includes the creation of a certain earthquake survival guide. But not all of the effects of the frenzy were bad. In fact, the panic caused St. Louis to adopt safer construction codes. Some steps have already been taken to reduce the risk of earthquake hazards. The city of St. Louis recently adopted a tougher building code, and new construction is being designed to withstand seismic forces. Older buildings like this Veterans Administration Hospital at Jefferson Barracks are being reinforced in case of a major earthquake. And while Browning's prediction was bogus, that doesn't mean that St. Louis is out of the woods. Gragnani says an earthquake is still very likely for our region. I believe that there is a good chance this region is going to experience some type of major earthquake, something in the 6.0 on a, on a Mercalic scale uh, level, just because of the fact of the history of the faults being here in the St. Louis area. But I think that chance is somewhere in the 20 to 30 percent chance over the next 50 years. So in reality, yes, we have a risk, and I do believe that someday we're going to get some level of an earthquake. What we were trying to do is trying to tell people, you can't worry about just that day. You've got to be prepared for ever, for always being prepared for something like this. The 1990 panic may seem silly now, but the information from the survival guide is still relevant. So don't forget to pack up your safety kit because, and it's worth repeating, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when have a flashlight and portable radio. The radio is really important. You want to keep in touch with the outside world. For Living St. Louis, I'm Veronica Moheski.